It's Cheese Ninja. It's been a while. So long in fact that the Mountain Blade Warband mod I was playing has updated multiple times since I last played. This means as we get back into the playthrough of Banner Page, there are going to be several new features to explore. Also, this time around I added my own personal twist by creating my own companions. They're all past characters that I have played as over the last 10 years of playing this wonderful game. I'm so excited to introduce you to all of them. Anyway, it's been so long that I wanted to start from the beginning. So if you've watched previous videos and don't want to go through the whole character creation process again, feel free to skip forward and get straight to the action. I think that's all I got. So without further ado, I present my playthrough of Banner Page 3.1. Let's just get started. Uh, the screen is probably familiar to all of you. Uh, if you've watched my previous Banner Page videos, uh, I'll just kind of briefly explain some things. Uh, you can choose a lot of starting locations, like, uh, not locations, but like, what you, what is your role before the game starts? Were you a beggar from the start, or were you a faction ruler? Uh, I've recently tried playing as faction ruler. It's a lot of fun. You could basically, you know, you could beat King Harless and let Swadia die in 30 days, or you could see if you can be better than him. Anyway, I always pick beggar because you start with absolutely nothing, and it's, in my opinion, the most fun challenge. You really go rags to riches and take over the world after having nothing to begin with. I've had a real challenge of a day! When it comes to attributes, uh, I like a lot of charisma. I'm big on that. But we also need some strength so we can use basic weaponry. And, uh, yeah. 9669. We'll go with that. Feels like a rough start, but I appreciate the effort. When it comes to skills, this is the only thing that I think is pretty important, so if you're gonna take anything away from the intro here, uh, just remember this. There are merchants that travel throughout Calradia, kind of like the Ransom Brokers and the Travelers. Uh, and if you talk to them, you can actually pay them a lump sum of money and they will train you in one of these skills. And so if I, let's say I find the guy who is training you in like bow skills, I could have him train me in power draw and my power draw would go from zero to one. Uh, and then in the future, I could pay him uh, to go from one to two and so on and so forth. And each time you increase that number, it costs more money. So it's not like broken. I can't just like pay 5,000 dinars and have 10 in power draw in like a month. It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of money. So it's balanced in that way. But what this does mean is that you don't need to invest all the, the skill points that you get from leveling up on the same attribute that the skills that uh, merchants can uh, do for you. Uh, so instead, what I do is I put everything in stuff like leadership, prisoner management, and trade, because those aren't to be with that. Uh, I do put it in weapon master. And then also looting. There are eight skills that you can pay merchants to improve. Uh, iron flesh, power strike, power throw, power draw, and then shield, athletics, riding, and horse archery. So I personally am not going to invest any of the, the skill points I get from leveling up on any of these eight stats. I can become an extremely well-rounded character by improving stuff like inventory management and pathfinding and even being like a healer. I can be all these things and then I can just pay mage, uh, I can pay merchants to improve all my physical stats. So the result of this is I'm basically going to be good at everything and that will allow me to uh, not rely on my companions very much, uh, which in turn allows me to promote a lot of my companions to become lords themselves, which is gonna help me a lot when I create my own kingdom. So that's kind of the strategy for me. So if you're good with having zero in all these stats until you have enough money, do that and then you can become really good at all these other stats down here and then pay yourself pay your way to being decent at physical stats as well okay this is the screen everybody recognizes i of course will always be frederick let's see let's add some agility and guess i'm an idiot to start out but we'll work on that later um i i should point out that if you choose beggar you do get one free point of iron flush so that's kind of nice uh you know what I like it. I'm still going to invest everything into stuff like pathfinding and inventory management. I think those are so important. Also, I want to be a good engineer. That's going to matter later. Add one to looting. Add one to weapon master. Okay. Also, notice that slings is another stat line that you can improve. I don't use slings that much. It's a fun mechanic. So you can try it out, I guess. All right. I think we're good here. I've done this number of times I know exactly what I need to find this is just the character I always played in, in multiplayer and stuff like that I think this is the first character I ever created so I've always just used him whenever I do this kind of stuff all right I think this is good enough okay so here's the campaign map I'm sure a lot of you probably know or have seen this before 
But uh, this is the Nords. Vagers are over here. Kurgits are here. Saren is down here. They got the Rodox here and Swadians here. And yes, I know. Probably two or three of the factions I just named off sounded weird. It's probably because I can't pronounce them correctly or just like I'm so used to pronouncing it wrong that I just keep forgetting to, to do it right. And so I think that brings across a, a larger theme, which is that I'm going to mispronounce so many things in this game. And I just want to apologize for that in advance. Like if I if I call this Jerby Castle, I don't know if that's exactly how you would say that. Maybe it's Jerby. I just say Derby because I played this game for 10 years and I've always said it. It don't even ask me to freaking do this. Is that shape, shape, shape shit? Is that what it is? Do I have to bleep that out? So yeah, anyway, I'm on Ravenden. And so depending on what type of background you choose, you're going to get a different message. Uh, I'm a beggar, so I start with zero renown, zero honor. And apparently I, did, I didn't know this. Uh, but negative 10 right to rule. So that kind of sucks. Specials, none. You might as well hang a sign over you that says sucker, open for business. Yeah, beggar, I, I think beggar is the hardest. You don't get anything. And and, and apparently you actually just get a, a negative modifier. So that sucks. Uh, but yeah, we'll work with it. We'll be fine. Away with you, vile beggar. Okay, and this is just describing like my starting position, which is basically no food, no money. And it describes some different things that we can do to solve this. But before I do any of that, I'm, there's a couple more settings we need to look at. There's all these settings here. You can look at them in detail. I I don't use map travel exhaustion. And I enable slower free, uh, freelancer progression. So that means it takes longer for you to get promoted if you're serving in a Lord's party. Uh, I do not want the Dark Knights to invade. It's kind of like the Zan Dynasty. If you've ever played Parisno, it's another faction that just shows up in the middle of the game and just starts curb stomping everybody. I'd rather not do that. Maybe like at the end, if I take over the world, that I'll have them invade and just one v one them or something. I'm not gonna enable a permadeath either, cause my God, I'm a, I don't know if I'm built for that. I do like having these uh, random economic and AI changes to be at least at medium, just so weirder things happen. Uh, and I don't like it when lords return from exile. I think once you're kicked out, you're gone for good. There's also a ton of more battle settings, such as like reassigning people that are like lose if someone's dehorsed uh do they become an infantry i can do that if i want to i can even make him archers which doesn't make sense but uh and then no ammo archers i can make him infantry i personally don't do that but you can if you want to and there's so many things that you can look at specifically i won't get into all of it now uh and you can even enable the cheat menu without having to restart the game if i ever use a cheat menu it's literally just going to be finding an item that normally can't be purchased and i would explain it and show you ahead of time so i won't do any like behind the scenes like cheating to like make my character better or anything like that i will be transparent about everything a couple key settings you can call your horse and spear brace uh i don't really use i've actually used call my horse quite a bit because sometimes i'll dismount if my horse is almost dead and then i like i want it back at some point and then shield bash i have to change this because the way i attack uh, it's a bad habit i like right click and left click really quickly to like kind of switch where i'm changing my attack who's texting me right now i'm trying to play mountain blade uh, now, now, now is not a great time. I have, um, uh, goodbye. Anyway, I think that's all I care about in terms of the settings. I, I will briefly show you the difficulty that I play on, 126. Uh, so this is actually more of a handicap for Swadia than it is for me. But I like making all this stuff, like, really hard. I've played this game for long enough, it's like, give me a challenge, make this difficult. And I, I feel like this is a pretty good uh, representation of that. Anyway, so, we're a beggar. We have absolutely nothing. Look at this. Oh, wait, I have two dinars. Let's freaking go. Oh, am I better than everybody? <laughs> but yeah, I have no food or clothes or weapons or anything. Uh, so we need to change that because I'm going to start starving to death. And my morale, I think, is pretty low. Yeah, it's very low. So that's not good. Um... You can uh, get on your knees and start begging and just get money but if you just wait. Like, see? But, see what just happened there? I got two dinars from begging, which is great, but I lost one honor in the process. And honor's a really important stat line, because if you have high honor, good nature, and upstanding lords are going to be your friends instantly, and you don't have to do any quests to make them like you. So I love to increase my honor really high if I can. And so begging is going to kind of impede that process, so I typically don't do that. Instead, what I go is to village just like Sambuja here. 
and I ask around for any kind of work. So I wait for 24 hours, and yes, I'm starving, but it's fine. We're going to be okay. I'm not worried about it! After 24 hours, we're going to get a random item from the peasants. They're going to give me a gift as thanks for helping them with whatever chores they needed to be done. They gave me a hammer, so I just got my first weapon for free. And it's not much, but you know what? We're going to take it. This this is going to be my loot, uh, looter smacking weapon. I am going to do this one more time. Hopefully I can get some food because I don't want to starve to death. Although technically, if I'm in a party all by myself, there's no consequences for starving because no one's going to desert because it's just me. My body is betraying me. So let's, let's see if we can get cabbages. Let's go. Love me some cabbages. I Imagine you're working for a village and they're like, Thank you. Here are 50 cabbages. You may keep all of them. Like, I always kind of forget that this is not one cabbage. This is literally a representation of 50 cabbages. So now there's just like a, a naked guy walking around with 50 cabbages. I don't even have like a backpack to hold them. This is like Minecraft. I'm like stacking millions of cabbages and like apparently I can just walk around fine. Are cabbages, are 50 cabbages actually 15 pounds? Like, I wonder if that's accurate. How how much does the average cabbage weigh? I'd be curious to know. I made that up. I didn't think you were gonna fact check me. The next thing we need to do is beat up some looters. Uh, and yes, I could attack them with just a hammer, but I would like to get a, a, a better weapon. So what I typically do as my strategy is I continue to work for villages. I get more and more food. And I just sell all that food at a town. I'm literally basically being a farmer right now. I'm just working, I'm getting the food, and then I'll sell it at the markets until I have enough money uh, to, to buy like a crossbow, which is my ultimate goal is to buy a crossbow. So let's, let's go back to Raviden. I'm pretty sure the bread's gonna be worth more. Yeah, 45, that's pretty good. The, one of the settings I didn't uh, look at was uh, you can set whether you've met all the the, the guild master and the traders already. Uh, I, I don't because I actually like walking around and meeting them. Uh, like there's the horse guy, I'll talk to him real quick. I can't afford any of these, but one thing I love about banner pages is the sheer amount of horses that they've added and there's so many varieties, it's so cool. But I can't ride any of them because I have no riding skill. So it's gonna be a while before I actually get to take advantage of that. Where's the, the weapons guy? Uh, okay, that's the armor. I'm not gonna buy any armor for a while. But uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna beat up looters and we're gonna take their clothes instead. Uh, but we, we, what we really need is uh, this fine lady here and her weapons. Uh, do you have a crossbow? A fine light? Oh, this is exactly what I'm looking for. So we need about 400 dinars. There are a couple ways we could do that. We could keep buying food, I mean, working for food, or we could just grind it out in the arena. Uh, although, this actually brings up another good point. One more setting. For those of you who don't know what this is, this is Brainy Bots. I just, I, I just tapped U, the, the, the keyboard letter U, and this whole menu shows up. And you can edit how good, like, non-player characters are at fighting or you can actually make it so everyone not even just like unique characters just like every soldier i can make it so they never miss a block i could make it so it's impossible to take people out in melee um we're gonna make it so even if you're a looter you have a 50 percent chance to block everything uh but as the better you get uh you've got a three-fourths chance to block everything i like to make it hard i have to really work to take out anybody i like to make it so i'm not like a I don't feel as much of a main character. I, I, it's, it's. I can't just take out 50 people on my own. I mean, you know, I think later on I will anyway. But I'm gonna make it hard on myself. I'm gonna make it so it can fate up to 10 times because I think it's a lot more fun. Uh, and so yeah, and we'll make this the stat right here. We make this 250. So the closer to 250 their weapon range is, the more likely they're gonna have these modifiers. Like they're gonna three fourths chance of blocking. They're gonna hold it more often and they're gonna faint more often. Uh, but if they're just at 100, they'll probably have these. And like in between, it's like it's a gradient. At least that's how I think it works. So Brady Bots is a lot of fun if you want to make uh, combat more challenging. Uh, I think at this point, the basic non Brady Botted AI is just way too easy for me to, to beat up at this point. So it's good to give yourself a challenge. So anyway, yeah, melee fights. Love beating people up with my old gray shorts. 
Oh, they're all already double teamed. That's great. Mm. I don't like this. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know how I came out of that okay. As you can see, this, those guys are actually a lot better at blocking than uh, characters are in native, so I think it makes it a lot more fun. It does make the arena kind of hard. It's hard to beat like 32 people that are actually pretty good at blocking. I don't know. They're still not perfect. A lot of these guys aren't the best units, so they're not going to be blocking everything anyway. And I have the habit of kicking people a lot to make it so they literally cannot block anything. Oh my god. Yeah, see, this, these guys are chambering and really... Yeah, I... I like to think I'm pretty good at this game, but I'm not good enough to just, like, you know, be perfect against that stuff. Yeah, so... You can try it out for yourself. I... I think it takes a long time to get enough money... I, I, wow, well, nice. 69 dinars. I regret that. Uh, but let's go to villages and... Because, like, if I if I work for 24 hours and I get a piece of chicken, or actually 50 chickens, that is worth a lot. It's, like, worth 100 dinars instantly, so... And the other nice thing is uh, you have a chance to make the village happy or the person who owns the village happy. Like, so you can improve relations with people in the process of doing this. Oh, I got a freaking torch. That's not worth three... three? I already have a hammer. I don't need a torch. That sucks. But look, I made uh, this village happy. I don't know why this guy likes me. Oh wait, he owned the other village. I probably made him happy when I made this village happy this time. So, Yeah, Boyer Kumapa is a big fan of me, even though he's never seen me before because I worked in his village for 24 hours. I don't need yes, chicken! Oh my god, okay. Let's sell this at Raven. It's going to be worth like 100 dinars or something. Okay, 81, but still, and I don't want this torch either. That's that's a huge boost. 156. Uh, the one thing I should be worried about, though, is the, the if this stuff refreshes, I, there might not be a crossbow here anymore. So I might actually just do some more arena fighting. Plus, it, it can't hurt for me to brush up on my fighting skills. It's actually been a minute since I've played, so... Oh my god. Oh, I thought he was going to attack me. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, okay. I thought that guy blocked that. There's nothing quite like beating up a bunch of naked guys with a wooden staff. You know? As you can see, I use the kick mechanic a lot. I would say that it probably doesn't translate to how I fight in actual battles. I kick a lot in the arena. But I don't really do that a lot in open field battles. Because uh, usually there's a lot more going on. It's not just a 1v1 where I can just mess with them. Alright. I love it when they get stunned. Oh my god! Okay. Respect to that guy for not just instantly going after me. That was scary. Also, uh, the pay scale is doubled from what it is in native. So, like, normally I think you get, like, 25 dinars for killing or knocking out 10 people. But I, I think I got 50 at this point. I get to, like, 120 if I can get to 20. I rarely make it all the way to the end, but we'll see. If I make it to the end, I get 500 dinars, and that would be... Instantly enough for me to buy that crossbow. But I do have to buy bolts as well, so that's going to be an extra amount. Oh, 
Oh no, 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 don't shoot me. Let's fight back here where he can see you, but not me. Oh, okay. You're going to shoot at me and not him? Fool. Okay, here's how we're going to do this. Now, if I just kick this guy, I'll get to the, the 20 mark. Oh, I kicked him. Okay. Now, there's no difference. I, can, no, I either uh, get the bonus for 20 or I win the entire thing. So, there's no point in me trying hard to take all these people out when I can just wait till the end and just try to kill whoever's at the end. The only problem is, if a bunch of them decide to gang up on me, then I'm going to have to fight four people at once. Uh, but I think we should go for the, the practice sword. I mean, the heavy practice sword. That does a lot more damage. Or maybe I get a shield so I can protect myself better. There's only eight people left. If I win this, that's going to be huge. I don't see any teams yet. That's huge. I think this is it. This is everybody that's left. Okay. Okay, I think I got the... Okay. Oh my god, I feel so good right now. I actually beat the whole thing. Okay. Yes, and I leveled up. Let's go. I actually can't believe it just happened. Uh, uh, training's always going to be important in the future. I, I like to be able to train troops very well. So I'm going to put those in there now. Also, you might be questioning, wait, what are these previous and next? I can cycle through all the troops that exist in the, in the mod because I left uh, enable editing mode on. Uh, I because I what I like to do is I like to go around and just kind of like you know add things to like the scenery and stuff like that. So I can do Control E and I can just like look at all these. I don't know if this window is going to show up on the the video, but there's another there's another menu here that's showing me all the different items I can choose from to add. So, like, I could add an Arabian ramp right here if I wanted to. Uh, I'm not going to right now, but, like, if I if I take control of a, a town or something, I like to edit the scenery and make it my own personal, like, vibe. So, we'll do that at some point. More importantly, I have enough money to buy that crossbow. So, let's do that. Let's buy, I believe it was a fine light crossbow. Yes. Do I have enough for bolts? 620. Oh my god, this is awesome. I, I can buy it. Alright, now we're in business. This is the peak male physical condition. Uh, no shirt, no shoes, uh, but I'm definitely going to be delivering some service. That felt weird to say. In the form of bolts into the faces of many looters if we can find them. So, let's see if we can do that. Hey! Thanks for watching. If you want to see more Mountain Blade content, subscribe. If you have any questions about Banner Page or Warband, leave a comment and I will answer it to the best of my ability. If episode 2 is out, it's below me. If it's not, that's probably an older video. Don't worry about it. I plan on posting new episodes of this playthrough at least once a week, if not sooner than that, so we don't have to worry about any more 9 month gaps between videos. I promise. Anyway, I think that's it for now, so thanks again for watching and I will see you when episode 2 comes out.